So guys, welcome back to Chop's Garage. For those of you who didn't watch the previous video, you need to go, might go back and watch that for this to make sense. But we've got the first car in from the mammoth buying session that I did. We have got another one in to my left, but I'm gonna have to do them one by one, otherwise the videos will be too long. So this is the first car that I won, which was the 2012 Sia Ibiza. And if you remember, we won this at a price that, I think we won it all in for 2,400, something like that, on a 2012, which is well under what cars have been going for recently. The uh, retail value of this is about four and a half, four two. So the question is, what might be wrong with it? As always, because this came from British car auctions and traditionally the cars um, don't come in quite so good. They're in auction for a reason. So the first thing with this car is that all I've got is a key. I've got no log book uh, and no other paperwork at all. So that's my first thing up. I'm going to need to get a remote key done for it. So there is some cost involved straight away in that. I'm going to have to get the log book ordered up, which is £25. And I'm going to try and track down some service history on it. Uh, so that's not great straight out of the book. But then there's a reason you get these cars cheaper. If they've got everything perfect, you can't get them at a price that you can make a profit on. So there's always a bit of work involved in it. So we'll have a quick look around the bodywork side of things. I mean, I've had a quick look over it and it looks really straight i mean down the side here we're free of any dings and dents it's got some nice alloys on it and no curbing on that alloy at all down the side here we're all good the cap's got no scratching on it this wheel's got no curbing on it at all as well which is really nice go around the front end of the car we've got a less than ideal panel gap there but nothing outrageous for the age Got no chipping on the edge of the bonnet. Here the panel gets better, so we'll just fiddle around with that one. A very minor amount of curb in here. That's really good news, guys, on the old wheel side of things, because that can take up quite a lot of time refurbing wheels, because they don't like to send them out curbed, as you know. Wheel cap's good, uh, wing mirror cap's good there with no damage. And down this side, I don't see any dings down here. The bodywork is really, really good on it, guys. It certainly doesn't look like a an abused car a lot of the time the paperwork's missing because it's um been a bit abused but this doesn't look that way this looks like more of a lost type of case i'd say just to base on the condition have a quick look inside and um, i got it locked i have now the battery was flat when they had to get it off the trailer earlier as well so may well need a battery but we'll give it a full charge first double check I'll put the key in it, make sure it doesn't set off any alarms, anything like that. So first up on the interior, we've got mould. So we need to go look and see if there's any any leakage in the boot at all. Ah, here we go, I knew it'd go off. There we go. Um, yeah, so we need to go look and see if there's any leakage in the boot at all or not. But the actual seats themselves, after that's been cleaned up, I mean, this happens a lot with cars sitting around in the auction sort of thing, if they've had any damp in them at all they get mould on it's not uncommon at all for that to happen the seat itself really good condition the rear seats in really good condition there's no tears or marking in those so the only thing I've noticed is the one burn hole in the um, driver's seat there other than that it's in really good nick yeah we've got a bit of damp in the door card there I do wonder with the flat battery whether someone left the window open on it which happens a lot with the auction cars so they can get in and out without getting locked out and obviously that gets damp into the car and then that's when you start to get a bit of mold on it we'll see if there's anything in the glove box no we've got a locking wheel nut thank goodness so i don't think we're going to lack out on the history wise spec wise what have we got we've got stereo controls here don't think that's bluetooth no we've got oh we've got uh, cruise control nice yeah, trip meter. We've got electric windows. We've got electric mirrors. Uh, we've got aircon by the looks of it, I think. Yeah, we've got aircon. Audio wise, I'd be very surprised if we haven't got an auxiliary input on this. Let's have a look. Media, yeah, we've got an aux input for it, which is going to be, yeah, it's there down there. So we've got aux input. Uh, I don't think we've got Bluetooth looking at it. But yeah, I mean, it's all um, 
It's got all the necessary toys for a car of this age. And we know the windscreen wipers work. <laughs> it's done 79,000 miles. And if, we, if it will start up, I don't know if it will or not, we'll give it a go. No, battery's too dead. We'll have to have a look in the engine bay, get it running and see what we think of that. So as we know, before we go starting any of these auction cars, we do a few basic checks first. Coolant level is where it should be. Oil, let's check the oil. The oil level is correct. It's absolutely bang on actually. And it isn't a horrendous colour, which would indicate it has had servicing. So again, we might want to try and track down what's happening in the service history. So we're okay on that front of things. Overall, the engine bay looks really quite clean actually. Again, it just does indicate this car probably is looked after. Well, that sounds really sweet to me, guys. Smooth as you like. I don't see any problems with that at all. Uh, have a look around the back. Yeah, not a jot of smoke out the back, guys. I honestly think this is, has been a well looked after car. I don't know what the story is with the paperwork, but it's just a loss of paperwork within the auction sort of network between dealer and in the auction house. But nothing about the condition of this car says to me it was neglected. It actually looks like a very well looked after car. So what's the game plan? Well, based on how many cars I've got coming on and how busy I'm going to be, this thing, as I said, looks super clean. So this is where you need to work out what's best to work on first. This car is going to need very little uh, in terms of prep from me. Whatever it needs for the MOT, I'll probably get the MOT guys to do down at Moore's, Phil to do the MOT. So it's most likely going to come back to me, MOT, uh, MOT'd and ready to go. So then it will just be final detailing. As, as I said, there's not a lot to do on that front. So it makes sense to get this one straight down, get it MOT'd. So, we're going to whip it down to Phil's um, and that will give us an opportunity to see if there's anything concerning drive-wise on it. But um, yeah, let's get it down there and see what we think. Right, let's get it down to Moore's and see what we think of the drive. Let's see, yeah, this belt is a bit damp, there's a bit of mould on it. So we've got some damp in here. I don't think it's in the boot from looking at it, but we'll double check that later on. I think the window's been left open. Oh, here we go. Boing, boing. Okay, to the left. We turn to the right. Boing, boing. Right, we've got a broken spring or a top mount straight out the gate. Oh, for those of you that worry, of course, this is on my trade insurance. They're added as soon as I buy them. So, clutch is about in the middle. That's okay. Goes into gears nicely. Oh, 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 what have we got here? Big rotational noise. Oh dear. That is probably just a wheel bearing, I think. It's rotational, so it's not engine. And I don't believe it's gearbox because you can tell that by dipping the clutch in and out. The noise stays the same whether the clutch is in or out or not. So we've got a wheel bearing and we've got a spring or a top mount. So this is why the car was part exchanged. Someone's got to a point where they don't want to spend money on it by the looks of it. Now if I let go of the steering on a straight section of the road, it steers straight. So I don't think we've really had damage, anything like that. But we've um, definitely got a wheel bearing. I would have thought. But that's not outrageous. That's not the end of the world. Like I said, we got it cheap, didn't we? And we get them cheap for a reason. If you think you're going to go to auction and buy cars, you can just wash and stick out the door. Sorry, guys, you've got another thing coming. They go into auction for a reason. It's incredibly rare that you get one that doesn't need work. 
So please do not go off the basis of my video, go buying cars at auction thinking that it's a license to print money. So anyway, yeah, going through it. Other than that horrendous wheel bearing noise, I can't hear anything else. The gearbox is fine, the steering's fine, the clutch is fine. So I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a case of getting in, get Phil to do the wheel bearing, um, get to do the broken spring or the top mount, whatever it is, get it MOT'd, and then take it from there. Just down at Moors. Phil's got this beast of a 7 Series just sitting here, he's doing nothing with. Every time I see it I'm very tempted to make a poor decision and get my hands on it. 740i with some big old Alpina style alloys on it and it's even got like the old original mobile phone in there. There is something kind of cool about that. Right guys, so those of you that follow the channel regularly will remember that I had a Vauxhall Sofia that the ECU played up on, um, let the customer down. They did have, I did put warranty wise cover on the car for them, which I do with all of my vehicles. I put warranty wise cover on. It's a belt and braces thing for me. I've got warranty wise there to back me up if there's a problem that can be covered by the warranty. If it's something that's more wear and tear um, and happens fairly early on, I'll eat it. If it's something that's actually broken unexpectedly kind of thing, then I'll claim from a warranty wise, which is a fair thing to do. You can't expect them to cover wear and tear items. But the ECU played up on the uh, Safira. I sent it off, got it repaired, and I think the bill was around about 250 quid plus the VAT or something, wasn't it? So not insubstantial. Anyway, just had a call from Babel from warranty wise, all approved, all paid up, sending me a check out for it absolutely brilliant service as always now in the comments i always get a lot of ragging of warranty companies saying this that and the other you know they're no good da, da, da. i think it's how the warranties are sold to people i think if you're sold a warranty as a consumer buying a car and it's not explained to you that it won't cover wear and tear items and the dealer doesn't explain that to you and makes you believe that you're going to be entirely covered on everything then i think you're going to have a problem with them but if you set the right you know expectations i think you're okay I will say with warranty wise, I have not had a claim refused yet. All the claims I've put in being put approved, I've had a, a um, catalytic converter for a 2010 Toyota Yaris. I've had a, uh, I've had the, the injector done on a Audi A1 that was like 1200 quid. I had a, um, what else have I had done? Obviously they had this one done. A lot of you say, I'll oh, put the money in the pot yourself and then just withdraw from it as and when the work needs to be done. I honestly don't think I'd have made any money out of that based on what warranty wise have paid out. They've paid out a lot of money on repairs. I don't think I would have actually made any more money keeping that money in a pot. So I'm gonna carry on sticking on there. And when I've got a great account manager like Babel that I have, and obviously a team behind them that are happy to work with them to keep dealers happy, then why would I change? So um, a lot of you ask me about it. I will put uh, in here and right now, I'll put down Babel's email address for you. If you're a consumer that has your own car, you're not buying from a dealer, but you want to put a warranty on it, or you're about to go and see a private sale car and you want to buy a warranty for it, Babel can help you with that. He might need to put you in touch with another department, but he can help you with that. If you are starting out trading like a lot of you are, or you're already trading and you've been thinking about warranties, I really do highly recommend them. Um, it costs me about, on average, £100 to put a warranty on a car. And you bear in mind that the warranty claim off of the uh, for this ECU on the on the um, let's have a quick look uh, my sales let's have a quick look see if I can find how much I paid out on the oh see if I can find out how much I paid out for the Zafira so the Zafira it cost me seventy four pounds forty to put the warranty on that Zafira and they're paying me out two hundred fifty quid plus VAT for the ECU. Seriously, guys, I, I really rate it. I really rate it. Again, sometimes you're going to spend money on cars. There's a lot of cars here that I've never had a claim on. And some of the cars you'll have seen where I've eaten it myself. Like I said, if it's a wear and tear item that's happened when the car's gone straight out the door, I've eaten myself because I believe if you treat them fairly, they'll treat you fairly. I can't expect them to pick up the bill on that. So you are going to spend money that you aren't necessarily going to get back. That's the, that's the way it is. But in terms of hassle, for you guys that are starting off just doing a few cars, and you, you worry about what happens if the car comes back to you, if there's a problem with it, this, that, and the other. 
you can put the warranty wise on i mean if you look down this list they very rarely cost me more than 100 pounds on the older stuff on the newer stuff is a bit more expensive but they don't really cost me more than 100 120 pounds and they can use this warranty at any vat registered garage and get the work done and so the lady with the audi a1 she took it to a garage completely away from me they put the quote into warranty wise for the repair warranty wise approved it they paid them directly i didn't get involved in it at all um i think the lady had to pay for just a couple of minor consumable items which i repaid her for but the hassle that saved me not having to deal with that brilliant and obviously all of these also come down with free breakdown cover so your customers going out with a warranty they can use any vat registered garage and they've got free breakdown cover as well. So you're not gonna get into that situation where the car's broken down the side of the road, I want you to recover it, and I want you to get it to a garage, and it cost me this much to get it recovered, and I think you should repay me that. You got none of that, because they had the, the um, roadside recovery as part of the warranty when you sold it to them. So, like I say, a lot of you got mixed feelings on that, presumably because you've had refusals on warranties before, but I have to say, overwhelmingly for me, I haven't had any experience with any other warranty companies, I will say that. They're not paying me to say this, they haven't approved my repairs because of this video. I'm never gonna turn around to Warranty Wise and say, because I'm a YouTuber, you should approve my warranties. They, to be honest, I think they're pretty much unaware that I say, and Babbel's aware that I've mentioned them a few times, but I'm not driving loads of business to them. I don't think they've had any new accounts off the back of me. So this is my genuine, unsponsored sort of feedback on what I find with warranty. So just getting started on the Fusion, I've had a call from Phil down at Moore's on the see it already. In terms of fail, we need a wheel bearing like we thought we did. We need a spring, so it was a broken spring, so I diagnosed that correctly. Uh, what else did he say? We needed an exhaust clamp, and there's a tire with a nail in it that would have been an advisory, we're just gonna change that so it's advisory free. Um, I think there was something else that was gonna make it an advisory. Can't remember what that was. So yeah, I think we're looking at a spring. He said he'll probably do the top mount at the same time. Uh, we're gonna do the wheel bearing and a couple of tires. So nothing outrageous, not as not as cheap as it would nice to be to get out of it. You know, it would be nice to only put a tire on it or whatever. So I imagine that bill is gonna be in the region of, it could be two to 300 pound. I don't know exactly how much it's gonna be, but then it'll be advisory free. So not outrageous. I say we got it at a good price. So we're still on track at the moment. So you'll have to tune in for the next video. That's not mine, by the way. That's Adrian's visiting. <laughs> you'll have to tune in to the next video to see how we get on with that one. And then we've got the next flip that's already in as well, which I've done the content for as well. So, uh, oh, you'll notice the Volvo's in. A lot of you have been asking about the Volvo. Uh, that is in because before these other ones come into stock, I want to get the wing off get the bumper off check out if everything's okay behind there because this is definitely going to get done and up for sale because it's too nice a car not to get done for that minor little bump there but we've just got to double check there isn't anything else major going on so anyway as always thanks for watching guys if you're not subscribed please consider hitting that subscribe button before if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up so it can recommend it to other people and i'll catch you again soon